It is indeed good to be in the house of the Lord with you all this morning. Isaiah reminds us, all who thirst, come to the water. So come, all you who are weary, all you who yearn for forgiveness. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ, has washed over us, and our gracious and holy God beckons and blesses us. Drink deeply of these living waters. Glory to you, O oh Lord, glory to you. Come, let us worship the Lord by joining together in singing our opening hymn, Come, Live in the Light. Reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 5 through 14. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, 
where they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Charlotte, Sergeant, uh, for reading our scripture this morning. Will you pray with me? Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on this body gathered here. Though we are far apart, we know that you are here with us. Illumine to us today new insights, new ideas that we may see a vision of your kingdom here on earth. Remind us that we do not do this great work alone. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. What is your earliest memories of prayer? If you are like me, I prayed with my family every night before bed at meal times, and then when we were at church. I also remember one of my earliest memories of prayer, praying around the table with my cousins and my brothers when we would visit our grandfather for the summers in Montreat, North Carolina. So what is your relationship with prayer now? Do you pray during hard times? Do you pray before a meal, giving thanks to God for the food? Do you say prayers every night with your children before tucking them into bed? What is your relationship with prayer? Wherever you find yourself today in your spiritual life, I invite you throughout this sermon to think deeper about prayer. Or I invite you to think differently about what prayer might look like in your own life. Prayer the heart of our Christian worship. There are different kinds of prayers that we offer throughout our worship service. Prayers of confession, prayer of illumination, which I just prayed before this sermon, prayers of the people where we offer prayers of thanksgiving, adoration, intercession to God, and often concludes with the Lord's Prayer. Prayer. What is your relationship with prayer? Most of you know, but for those of you who don't, Presbyterians are governed by a book of order. The book of order is reviewed bi-yearly in June at the General Assembly, which just concluded for the first time over Zoom. So at the General Assembly, the book of order is reviewed with any new additions or subtractions. Generally, the changes are minor and large sections will go untouched, but these changes are done thoughtfully critically, prayerfully, they require outreach and organization. So I will now invite our engineer to bring up a portion from our book of order on our slideshow. And this is on the topic of prayer from the section W5.0102. Entitled prayer in daily life. <laughs> We would respond to God's grace through the gift of prayer. The Christian life is one of constant prayer, as the challenge of everyday discipleship requires daily disciplines of faith. Prayer is a way of opening ourselves to God who desires communication and communion with us. Prayer may take a variety of forms, such as conscious conversation with God, attentive and expectant silence, meditation on scripture, the use of service books, devotional aids, and visual arts, and singing, dancing, labor, or physical exercise. 
The church's pattern of daily prayer found in section 5.0202 may be adopted as an individual practice of faith. Prayer may also be expressed in action through public witness and protest, deeds of compassion and other forms of disciplined service. Prayer is meant to be a gracious gift from God, not a task or an obligation. It is an opportunity to draw inspiration and strength from one's relationship with God in Jesus Christ. It is a way of continually seeking the gifts and guidance of the Holy Spirit for daily living. Prayer is a practice to cultivate throughout one's life and one that will bear much fruit. So what do we say when we don't know how to pray? What do we say when the words won't come? What do we say? What do we say when we see yet another week of a global pandemic continuing to rage, cases rising, protests in our city and across our country affirming that Black Lives Matter? So what do we say? What do we do? What do we pray? But our text reminds us, what, not what can I say, but instead Jesus teaches his disciples, pray in this way. And there on the Sermon on the Mount, he teaches the words that will later form what we call the Lord's Prayer. the Lord's Prayer. <clears throat> but our text reminds us not, what can I say? No, but instead, Jesus teaches his disciples, pray in this way. And there, on the Sermon on the Mount, he teaches the words that will later form what we call the Lord's Prayer. These words of hope, these words that guide our footsteps continually towards peace, Jesus comes in with the words when we are stunned, silent, shaken, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Not my will, God, but yours. Your will is a vision for peace and hope because time and again throughout history, you have shown that you are good. That God, you will provide daily bread and deliver us from evil. That God will forgive our debts or trespasses as we forgive one another that you, God, are a God who loves justice, kindness, righteousness, and mercy. So let our protest, our cries for justices and learning about a more just world by educating ourselves and our children with new anti-racist book lists be our prayer. Let my feet, when one walks in front of the other while I hike on a mountain that you created, be my prayer. When I volunteer at the community kitchen, let this be my prayer. When I am singing so loud in groups or even alone in my car, when I am dancing, even silly dancing, because God loves joy. When I am painting or creating new art, let this too be my prayer. Because you are a God that loves joy and celebration. And let these words from Matthew feel, fill the deafening silence when I don't know what to say. When I give money or time to organizations that I believe are doing good work, when I sit in silence, when I meditate, when I breathe, let this be a prayer also. Because I know, God, that it is a gift to strengthen in my relationship with you through our son, Jesus Christ. Let me seek daily the gifts and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Let us seek daily the gifts and guidance of the Holy Spirit. And when you are sermon writing, you need the Spirit to intercede because time drifts by draft by draft, agonizing over the question, God, what can I say? God, what can I say? But no, pray in this way. 
a few weeks ago, the worship planning team committed to preaching a series based on the Sermon on the Mount from the Gospel of Matthew. I love the Sermon on the Mount because it's Jesus's powerhouse sermon that includes the Beatitudes teaching to love our neighbors as ourselves, this section on the Lord's Prayer, and then teaching not to judge others. I admit I was nervous to lock into a sermon series with everything that has been happening in our country over the past few months. Things seem to change week to week, day to day, or what is even eerier is the absence, the silence of what's not being said or reported any longer in the news papers. But where the spirit did show up in our sermon series was with messages of hope. The Spirit showed up with messages of hope. Tom, Clay, and I, over the past few weeks, have looked at the Sermon on the Mount and this rich Christian history that we carry of hope. From salt and light to loving your enemy, it's no wonder that Matthew is the gospel introduced first in the New Testament. Throughout time, as Christians were forming their identity, they would teach from the Gospel of Matthew. They would teach these words from the Lord's Prayer in conjunction with the Ten Commandments and the Apostles' Creed. The Gospel of Matthew is generally introduced in first Sunday school curriculums because it follows from the lineage of Jesus, his life and works, including this Sermon on the Mount, to his crucifixion, resurrection, and that ever hopeful ending to remember that Jesus is with us until the end of the age. Hope persists. Hope continues to stand out in the Sermon on the Mount year after year after year. Revisit after revisit, and there it is, hope. So today, this sermon series concludes with this prayer that prays about hope for yesterday, today, and tomorrow. There is a hope for tomorrow, hope for tomorrow. The prophets from the Old Testament cry out and Revelations affirms there will come a day where every tear shall be wiped away. God's kingdom will reign on earth and justice will roll down like cool rushing waters. In our baptism in Christ, there will be neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, man nor woman. Yes, I'm talking about that hope for a better tomorrow. Your kingdom will come, God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes, I have a great hope for tomorrow. A few weeks ago, Sesame Street broadcasted a town hall on racism. The town hall was led by the cast of Sesame Street, Van Jones and Erica Hill of CNN, with special guest Keisha Bottoms, mayor of Atlanta, and Dr. Naya Hurd Garris, a black pediatrician based in Chicago. Between the speakers and the Sesame Street puppets, there was an open space created for children, families, and parents to express their fears, their angers, but also their hopes for tomorrow. Dr. Naya Hurd Garris answered a question from a young black boy from New York who dreams of being a neurosurgeon when he grows up. He asked if he could change racist brains. And Dr. Hurd Garris's answer is one that I will carry with me. She said, we are so excited that you are going to one day join us, those of us who are doctors in black. We are working hard to change people's hearts, minds, and policies so that there is a day when you don't have to operate on a racist person's brain. The anti-racist books I've been checking out from the library on their reading apps, Libby and Hoopla, have up to four or five people waiting on 22 or 23 copies of eBooks with waits from six to eight weeks. That's 88 people in the city alone. And then anti-racist books I've ordered on bookshop.org have come back with messages of backlisted or back ordered. I have not seen this kind of wait or holds on books ever. It shows me that people are listening. It shows me that you are listening. It shows me that I am listening. It shows me that you have a hope for a better tomorrow. 
in our own congregation, our prayer shepherd program continues to pair together families of the church with one another in a commitment to pray for the children and youth of this congregation. In this program, bonds are strengthened between families and there is a comfort in knowing someone is out there praying for you by name. So God, let these be our prayers, our prayer and our action, and when we don't know what to say, when the words won't come, let the Spirit intercede with these words from Matthew 6, the Lord's Prayer, so that we can hold on to hope, so that we can keep it near to us. Let it continuously illumine the path in front of us. Let us continue to hope for a brighter tomorrow, praying all along the way. Amen. As we envision God's kingdom here on earth, let us continue worshiping God by singing together, come build your kingdom here. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. Your kingdom first, we hunger and we thirst, refuse to waste our lives, for your our joy and prize, to see the captive hearts released, the hurt, the sick, the poor at peace, we lay down our lives for heaven's call. We pray, revive this day. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set the church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere, build your kingdom here, we pray. Unleash your kingdom's power, reaching the near and far, the force of heaven stop, your beauty changing heart. You made us for much more than this. Awake the kingdom seed in us. Fill us with the strength and love of God. We are your church. We are the hope on earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom near. We pray.
Thanks, brother. Uh, that was great to have uh, uh, Tracy and Sophie. I think uh, I saw that pop up. That, I don't know if Tracy got in on that or not, but uh, um, nope, Josie and Courtney. Uh, um, so this is the moment where uh, we uh, think about how we might give back uh, with our time, uh, with our gifts, and uh, with our treasure. I, we have a number of ways to do that. You can do it on our website, rivermontpc.org. Uh, uh, and there's PayPal and text to give as well. Uh, and uh, many of you continue to mail in your offering, uh, your pledge. And uh, just to take a moment to say, uh, y'all are amazing. Uh, we are doing well, even in the midst of this uh, COVID pandemic, uh, we, uh, uh, we are doing well. We're ahead, uh, just a little bit, but ahead. And uh, that is because uh, just like uh, God uh, will not be hindered by uh, a quarantine, neither will you. Uh, this church is still alive and well and doing wonderful ministry. And so a huge thank you for your generosity. Uh, Henry McGuire, uh, John Thomas's friend from uh, grad school, and uh, John Thomas uh, saying uh, the Lord's Prayer for us uh, in the spirit of uh, or uh, on the heels of a, a sermon about the Lord's Prayer. So uh, enjoy uh, this as you uh, are grateful to God. prayers of the people. I want to, um, we need to be praying for uh, Linda Millard, whose mother Dorothy passed away. Uh, 
earlier this week and for Annie Eberhardt, um, whose father passed away. Uh, um, giving thanks uh, that Alden uh, had one more trip, Alden Perry, to uh, Vanderbilt and uh, the uh, miracle of medicine and what they can do now. So that seems to be going really well. So we give thanks with you all for that and for Russ and his gift of preaching. Uh, we'll end with the Lord's Prayer. And uh, while it might sound a little bit like a cacophony, we'll say that it's uh, the echo of prayers across the lands. So um, I'm going to invite you to, when I say, and uh, we pray as Jesus taught his disciples to pray for then you to go directly into our Father. And I'll just kind of do a count for you all. I won't be saying it that way. You all will just be coming following okay. this count. Okay. So just, we're going to unmute you all and you're going to say our father, Lord in heaven, how be thy name. Okay. All right. We'll see how it goes. All right. All right. Uh, let's take a deep breath and then we'll pray. Try and God quiet our racing minds, clear the clutter, the chaos in our life, that we might see you more clearly, that we might know your will so that your will might be done. Draw us to your word again and again so that we might hear how you're calling us to be faithful in this time and place in streets where they cry out for justice, in homes where children cower, around the world where people hunger, clothing the naked, shelter for the homeless, your creation cries out and you're calling us to be faithful, to fulfill our calling, to be your hands and feet, to bring comfort to all those in need. It's you who creates and sustains and redeems, you who walked among us and showed us unconditional love, might we be like you. Might we love and forgive just like you. It's you who poured out your spirit and gathered us today. You who intercedes for us, you who prays for us when we do not know how to pray. Might our lives be our sermons? Might our lives be our prayer? Might we live fully into our faith? Rain down justice and the oppressed. Descend as a dove on our streets and homes and war zones, reconciling friend and foe. Use us as ambassadors of reconciliation. We pray for those in our church family who are lonely, who are anxious, who are depressed, who are sick. Bring comfort, bring healing, bring strength, bring the palpable sense of your presence, of your love, of your acceptance. Move us to the margins, whether that be uh, moving towards people who are struggling with their faith or people who have been ignored or people who've been oppressed. Give us the courage to be a voice in the wilderness when everyone is silent. Help us to point to you, a God of justice that desires that all people be treated with love and dignity and respect. We hold this church family, uh, I lift them up and hold them in the light that you might strengthen us, uh, that we might continue uh, by your spirit to find creative ways to uh, serve in this season. Uh, give thanks for the gift of music and uh, for uh, everyone who works so hard all week uh, for this, so we can have this hour together. We give thanks that you didn't leave us to our own devices, but in fact, 
taught us how to pray. So hear us as we all say together the prayer you taught us, everyone who works so hard already uh, for this, so we can have this power together. Our we Father, didn't leave us to our art in heaven, in fact, hallowed be thy to name. Pray. So hear us as we all say together the prayer you taught us, everyone who works so hard already uh, for this, so we can have this power together. Our we Father, didn't leave us to our own heart in heaven, in fact, hallowed be thy name. Pray. So hear us as we all say together the prayer you taught us and we want to work so hard all week for this so we can have this power together. Our Father, didn't leave us to our heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All right, I was running Facebook Live at the same time, so I'm not even sure how that went, but uh, Lord knows uh, uh, that God hears our prayers spoken. Or, uh, it didn't. It didn't go. I heard you praying, Amanda. Oh, I started. <laughs> Your Facebook you Live was on a it was on a feedback loop from all the yeah. other people's. So do you want to try it again, but with your speaker off? Uh, I was thinking maybe I would um, just sing it. Uh, I felt like Henry was kind of pitchy today. Did you notice that? Yeah, Henry and John Thomas. Yeah, maybe we can say it, but on mute. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all right. We're going to keep everybody. I'm going to say it. You guys join me. Uh, yeah. Mute everybody else. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's pray again. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>